Hello everybody, Trevor here, and welcome to another top video. You've all seen my top 10 worst Sharon Miller episodes video. Now, get ready to see my top 10 best ones by Sharon Miller. Now, believe it or not, there are plenty of Sharon Miller episodes that I actually like. This video is going to be a little different from the previous one. Not only will I include those written by Sharon Miller, but I will also include the ones written by other people. But just like the previous video, I will only include episodes from seasons 13 through 16, so no new model era episodes. Trust me, I was going to include Thomas and the Runaway Car, but because it's a season 11 episode, I decided not to put it here. So anyways, let's get chugging. Number 10. Hero Helps Out Unlike the other season 13 episodes, which star members of the Steam Team, this one stars one of my absolute favorite characters named Hero. In this episode, Hero decides to give orders to other engines because their Topham hat was too busy. But later, he became the master of the muddle when he realized his mistake. Thankfully, he was able to fix it in the end. This is number 10 on the list because it follows the same formula as the other season 13 episodes. But this one is a pass because not only that it stars Hero, but it is the best episode of the season, in my opinion. Number 9. Stop That Bus In this episode, Thomas takes Bertie on a tour of the rails of Sodor and Misty Island. And that's one thing I like about it because Thomas really wants to make Bertie happy. The second thing I like about this episode is Rupert Degas' performance as Bertie. I think it's an improvement over Kevin Frank's voice from Thomas and the Magic Railroad. I came to see what you were doing. You're very busy, Thomas. You whoosh and you weesh all over the island. You see things I can never see. You do things I can never do. I wait to pick up passengers. Though, I don't like the part where they chuff to Misty Island only for Burry to fall off his flatbed and onto the Shake Shake Bridge. Oh, and did I forget to mention why I don't like the Shake Shake Bridge or even the Zipline Bridge? Well, because they're unsafe and unrealistic. I also don't like the part where Dowager Hat and her friends were cramming and jamming the drivers and firemen inside Thomas's cab. It just makes me feel sorry that the engineers were treated as the engine's hands instead of being the voice of reason. But hey, at least the episode ended on a pretty good note where they rescued Bertie and put him back onto the roads. This episode isn't as good as Jitters and Japes, but it's still one of the better episodes of season 15. Oh, and speaking of, number 8, Jitters and Japes. I don't know about you guys, but I love Dowager Hat. She's one of my absolute favorite human characters in the series. She's also really funny in this show. I especially love her mannerisms. In this episode, Thomas takes her on a slow trip to Misty Island, but all she wants to do is to have a fun and exciting trip, which I can't blame her. Normally, I don't like episodes centering around Misty Island, but this is one of the only few I can tolerate. Because not only it stars one of my favorite female characters, but it doesn't have the locking locos in it. Isn't that great? Sure, it does have Old Wheezy and Hee Haw in it, but that's the only con about it. Otherwise, this is just a great episode. I recommend it. Coming at number 7 is Diesel's Special Delivery. In my opinion, this is the best episode of season 14. Not only does it star Devious Diesel, but in this story, Diesel wants to be clapped and cheered by the children. He wanted to show James's pretty pink piglets to them, only to find out that their school roof is still in need of repair. Later, he managed to fix his mistake by bringing the piglets back to Farmer Trotter's farm, and after that, he finally delivered the slates to the school, which resulted in the children clapping and cheering for him. This just goes to show you that Diesel isn't all bad, even though he is technically a villain, but that doesn't mean he can't have a good side. After all, everyone has a good and bad side, including me. And that's why I love this episode so much. Number 6. Flash Bang Wallop 
This episode is an improvement over Ho Ho Snowman. Why? I'm about to explain. In this episode, a photographer has come to Sodor to take pictures of some of the engines so that the photos can be published into a railway book. My favorite bit has to be the book that Sir Tom and Hatch shows to the engines. I mean, I love how the book shows pictures of real-life locomotives, such as City of Churro. Another part I like about this episode was the part where Thomas tries to be a camera hog, which cracks me up. Unfortunately though, when the third strike came, that's when the photographer accidentally dropped his camera off a bridge and broke, all because of Thomas. Luckily, he was able to grab another camera from the docks, which leads to the only problem with this episode. Thomas just basically got what he wanted in the end, despite being a camera hog for the majority of the episode. But other than that, this was not only a good episode, but a very funny one as well. Definitely worth checking out. Number 5. Thomas Toots the Crows I don't know about you guys, but I think this episode was hilarious. It's one of those Thomas stories that's so bad that it's actually good, you know, like the room. In this episode, Thomas was trying to shoe some crows for Farmer McColl because the scarecrow was worn out and in need of repairs. One of my absolute favorite bits in the episode has to be when Thomas accidentally made the painter give Gordon a mustache. That part was absolutely funny because it looks like a Hitler innuendo. I even like the painter's expression showing that he accidentally made an adult joke about Gordon's painted Hitler-like mustache. Another bit I find funny was when, after Thomas explains to Den after chasing crows, Den was like, hm, chasing crows. See, even Den knows that Thomas's plan was just ridiculous. And when Thomas came back, there were even more crows at the field. I remember a joke that Miss Oliver and Blossom made back in 2012, where in his review of the episode, he made fun of this scene by saying, We claim this field in the name of Quebec! 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 Man, those were fun times on YouTube. But thankfully, Thomas decided to make up for his mistake by staying at Farmer McColl's field all day and all night, chewing crows, until the scarecrow gets fixed. Overall, I enjoyed this episode. Sure, it does have its faults, but I still consider it one of the better episodes of season 16. Coming at number 4 is Don't Bother Victor. This is one of the only two episodes of season 16 to feature the narrow gauge engines, and I consider it better than the Christmas Tree Express for a lot of reasons. 1. I like the part where we get to see Victor going outside of the steamworks. When I was a teenager, I couldn't tell whether Victor was standard gauge or narrow gauge, but then it was revealed that he was a narrow gauge engine, just like the Scarloe engines. In fact, he is the only narrow gauge engine to be owned by Sir Topham Hatt, aka the Fat Controller. 2. I like all of the voices for the narrow gauge engines, except for Scarloe and Sir Handel. Sir Handel's voice sounds too nasally and stuffy. Please fetch Victor. And Scarloe's? I can tell they were trying to make him sound like an old engine, but they made him sound too old and a bit booming at times. Hello, Peter Sam. My funnel is blocked. I can't puff or chuff. Please fetch Victor. I think that voice suits better for Glenn. Oh, and I'm also glad that they brought back Mr. Percival, and I enjoy both his UK and US voices. Three. I like the part where Duncan was mentioned by Reneas, even though his CGI model didn't appear until season 18, but that's okay. And 4. I even like the humor in this one, particularly when Reneas knows that Peter Sam's idea of not bothering Victor was a bit stupid. No, Reneas. We mustn't bother Victor, Victor with, with little, little things. things. If there's one problem I have with this episode, it would be the part where Peter Sam says that he's broken down by running out of fuel. Uh, Peter Sam? Just because you've run out of fuel doesn't mean you've broken down. But aside from that, this is a really enjoyable episode. Definitely one of the better Sharon Miller episodes out there. Number 3. Percy and the Calliope I really enjoyed this episode. 
In this story, Percy was willing to restore the Calliope into its original beauty, but Diesel refuses to believe that will happen and tries to send it to scrap. Luckily, Percy took the Calliope to the steamworks to get it repaired. I also love the part where Sir Topham Hatt says, You have saved a piece of Sodor's history! And I'm pretty sure everyone in the fanbase was like, Yeah! The real theme song! Another thing I like about this episode is the message that anything can be brought back to life no matter how old it gets. I love this moral because it makes me think of all the people who work for railways tried to raise enough money to help fix and restore steam locomotives so that they can run for visitors. Coming at number two is Happy Birthday Sir. In this episode, Winston wants to find the lost carriage that Sir Topham Hatt used to ride on for his birthday every year. What I like about this episode is that it stars Winston, though for some reason this is his only appearance in this particular season. I even like the black and white flashback showing Edward pulling the carriage with a young and skinny Sir Topham hat with hair. Another great and surprising thing about this episode is that Thomas was actually trying to be a really useful engine and not look for things. And I'm sure everyone in the fanbase at the time was like, You finally realize that now? But this episode has one small problem. I didn't like the part where Thomas bumps into Winston during the climax because he bumped him so hard that the driver who was driving Winston would have gotten seriously injured as a result of it, if it were to happen in real life, that is. Luckily, Winston was able to find the lost carriage inside some woods and brought it to the steamworks to be repaired. Overall, this was a pretty good episode, and I consider it the best episode of Season 16, with Percy and the Calliope being second. And if you discount the Christmas Tree Express, I think this episode in particular ended the Sharon Miller era on a perfect note. Before I get to my number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Welcome Stafford. Although I did like this episode a lot when it first came out, and I thought Stafford is a very interesting character, but nowadays I find it okay. Just okay. And it does have its problems, particularly when Stafford runs out of battery, he inexplicably goes back to the charging station to charge up. The biggest present of all. It got beat out by Hero Helps Out. Stuck on you. It was alright. The only best thing about it is Butch's return appearance in full CGI. And it does have some flaws too, particularly on how and when the magnet actually works. Bust my buffers. Again, it was alright. It was an interesting episode, but at the same time, it's kind of boring. And there were some errors and contradictions too, like Gordon being fixed at the diesel works by Den and Dart, even though Den and Dart said in Old Weezy Wobbles, they said that they don't fix steam engines. So that's why it didn't make it to the list. And the number one best Sharon Miller episode of all time is... Edward the Hero. Out of all the season 15 episodes, this is my absolute most favorite one of all. It is an Edward episode done right. In this story, he wants to be a strong, fast, and stern hero like Harold, but only to be a kind, gentle, and funny one in the end. Edward was disappointed in himself at first, but when he meets the people and engines that he helped again in the same exact locations, Everyone calls him a hero, but the best part of the episode is the moral, which is being yourself. You see, you don't have to be strong, fast, and stern like Harold. You can just be yourself. And that's why I love this episode so much. And it's the biggest reason why I made this my number one best Sharon Miller episode of all time. Great job, Sharon. Great job. Now, tell me in the comment section on which of these episodes is your favorite, or do you have a different preference of episodes? Because I'd like to know. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.